so this is what the question's asking for. It says that the current in the RL circuit shown below, which is half its maximum value in, okay, um, let, let me give this a label, in some time T1, after the switch S1 is thrown, determine the time constant of the circuit and the resistance of the circuit if uh, um, this is the given inductance, okay? So when it says uh, it reaches half its maximum value, it's giving you this piece of information that if you describe the current through the circuit as a function of time, then at time equals T1, the amount of current would be the maximum value. Let me label that I naught divided by two. Okay. And uh, we have to know the, well, I don't, well, we could know the maximum value of current, but I don't think we have to know that. So there's a way to do this question very quickly. Like if you remember some of the formulas, as in, you know, what the expression for the charging circuit like this looks like, that current is a current um, through the circuit going this way as a function of time is equal to some maximum value it's going to reach times uh, one minus exponential of uh, minus t over the time constant. Like if you know that, then you can do this pretty quickly. <laughs> um, well, you can do part A pretty quickly. But uh, let me go through the derivation because going through the derivation will also show if you don't happen to have it memorized what this time constant should be. So let me go through this derivation. So we are going to be using Kirchhoff's rules. Um, and as before we did these simple circuits, uh, we only need to use the loop rule because there isn't any junction that's uh, significant to think, speak of where something interesting is happening. So at time equals zero, uh, we are closing the switch at t equals zero. And we have current that's flowing as a function of time. And uh, let's just uh, work our way through here. So uh, I, I'll just uh, start from, because our battery is oriented this way with a positive on the right hand side. I think this, the direction I label the current in is the direction that it should have flowing. So I'll kind of follow that direction. So we'll start from here, go across the battery. And as I go across the battery, I get a voltage rise of plus, uh, I don't like the letter epsilon because it stands for EMF. Let me just uh, relabel this as, uh, as a bat, uh, voltage of the battery V naught. <laughs> so we gain the voltage V naught of the battery. And we are going to go across the inductor. And this is where you do have to consider carefully. So the voltage change across the inductor is given by inductance times the time derivative current. That part is uh, something you should have memorized. The part that's challenging is um, the direction of the sign. Should it be plus or minus? And I like to think through kind of common sense. <laughs> so as the current is flowing here, di dt uh, current will be increasing. So, um, so the current that's flowing through here, it's uh, going up, increasing. And it's a question of, do as I go across this uh, circuit element, do I want my voltage to be rising or dropping? And I hope you have this physical intuition that the voltage should be dropping. Because if a voltage is rising as I go across it, then it seems like the inductor is adding the energy and that violates some basic conservation of energy principle. So I'm going to say, oh, so the uh, voltage there uh, should uh, decrease. There should be a voltage drop. So that gives us the overall sign of the expression. We want the overall sign of the vo voltage change expression here to be minus. And when I put in inductance times di or di dt, uh, because this is positive, it'll give us a overall negative quantity, L times di dt. And 
somehow if we got this side wrong, then uh, you, as you watch the result, you should get something that doesn't make sense to you. So you know, always go through this consideration and just watch out for <laughs> when and if you make sign errors. Okay, so now I'm going to be going through the register. And as I do, I'm going to drop a voltage that comes from the Ohm's law minus current times, how am I writing this? Uh, minus um, resistance times current as a function of time. And after that, I'm coming back to my original starting point. So all these voltage changes should add up to zero. Good. So, so that's the equation. Um, and I guess I could do this uh, manually, but let me use my um, computer algebra system because it's going to have multiple terms and I don't um, I want to I don't want to spend so much time doing the separation of variables and working it out by hand. So let me just use my calculator and do it that way. So I'm going to declare my, my variables first. V0, L, uh, I, uh, R, let's see, do I need to declare a T? Okay. Uh, and I'm going to tell my program that my I is actually a function uh, of time. I think that's right. Okay. Uh, so let me write out, or I guess I can just do, uh, so the function for solving differential equation, and I've done this before in previous videos. So let me just uh, do it without <laughs> explaining a bunch of steps. So I'm going to be solving uh, the differential equation um, that has this form, um, V0 minus L times the derivative of I, function I with respect to time, first order derivative, minus R times I is equal to zero. That's my equation. And I think the first parameter is the dependent variable. This is kind of what I'm solving for, the function. That should be I. And uh, let me say uh, initial conditions are none for now. So that it'll give me some general solution and I can plug in initial conditions uh, later. And my independent variable is time t. I think that's enough. And when I do that, after some time for initialization, it'll give me an answer. And there's my answer. And um, all right, uh, let me, uh, so this uh, underscore C is the integration coefficient that comes from, so you can obtain it by applying initial conditions or you can just provide it to the function. So my initial condition, I'm specifying the, uh, I'm trying to remember. So I'm the first element is the value of the independent variable time at initial time, so for me that's a zero, and I have to give it the current at initial time. And this is something to think through here. So um, the property of inductor is such that, that the voltage change across inductor is given by the rate of change of current. And uh, what it does is it, it prevents a sudden change of current, because if you make the sudden change of current, it detects infinite amount of voltage. So um, so if uh, just before closing the switch, current was zero, then right after closing the switch, current will still be zero because that's the role of the inductor, prevent uh, instantaneous change of current. So the current through the circuit at time equals zero is still zero. So that's what I'm putting there. That should be enough. Let's see what it says. Ah, there it is. So, um, So that's the um, equation. And I think uh, that's uh, basically what I had there. So this is a current as a function of time that's equal to, you know, multiply this with that, you get one, um, or, you know, multiply this with that, they cancel each other out, you get one minus, and the second term, you get exponential of minus R times T over L. That's basically here. If, uh, let me write down the time constant. If the time constant was L over R. 
So that's the really the one piece of information that you might have been missing. So, okay. And uh, the rest of the coefficients, you know, they kind of, uh, uh, so, you know, V naught over R is your maximum curve. Uh, yeah. So I feel like there's a, so as long as I'm using computer algebra system, I think I can do this um, in a single thing. Uh, let me, just call this my uh, solution, and I can say that um, I, I can do an equation solve. So, um, so I have this value of the solution uh, with at time equals zero. That's um, yeah. Um, oh wait, wait, wait. That's not my. Uh, how do I put in time going to infinity? Uh, uh, <laughs> let me give it a little bit of a helping hand because um, I mean I know what the solution is and I know enough of the math to know that as time goes to infinity <laughs> that um, that this maximum current will be V naught over R. So uh, <laughs> let me give it that bit of a helping hand. Um, so I have uh, V naught over R. <laughs> Uh, that's my maximum current. Um, so I, I'm looking at this expression here. I want to say my current at this particular time divided by maximum current is 1 over 2. So I want the solution divided by V0 over R um, is equal to 1 over 2. Let me, okay, yeah, that's giving me some uh, intelligible expression and what I want to say is that oh solve this for t yeah there it is <laughs> the um, so uh, this is uh, something that's going to be useful in a bit but for the time constant I need a different expression because uh, um, so for the time constant, I needed this expression here. So let me just write that out. Uh, what I need is to say, um, uh, let me declare the variable t1. What I want to say is that, you know, this expression divided by i naught, which would be just uh, this portion of the right hand side, we want to say that 1 minus exponential of minus t1, which is the time that we are given, uh, divided by, I need to declare it now. So 1 minus exponential of minus t1 divided by tau is equal to uh, 1 half at the time given by t1. So that's the equation that's a given there. So that's uh, some intelligible expression. And I'll ask it to solve for uh, how the time constant is what we are looking for. And I can plug in what T1 is. So, okay, there it is. <laughs> so, um, so tau is a T1 divided by log logarithm of two. So it should be 2.4 milliseconds divided by logarithm of two. Uh, or uh, one uh, one need to do the decimal calculation. So the time constant is a three point four six. Um, the number is a three point four six, and it's in the same unit as the unit I specified this in milliseconds. So le let me plug in the number to make sure I got it right. Three point four six. Okay, <laughs> and now knowing that time constant. We can um, we can uh, get the uh, we can get the resistance. So I guess uh, uh, the easy way to do it would be to use what I wrote down here. Uh, we have time constant here. I have time constant written out here. So the resistance R would be equal to um, the inductance divided by the time constant. You can do that. Uh, I thought there was a way to use uh, one of the solutions we got. Um, so when I solve that for 
T. Um, I already have T. Oh, let me solve that for R. <laughs> then uh, L is the value that's in the question. And this T would be the time T1. Because uh, we are basically looking at this condition here, which is satisfied at a particular time. We are given the particular time and we are looking for the resistance which makes everything whole. And that's exactly that. So my resistance will be the, let me put it inductance in unit over Henry. So it should be 0 .0, uh, 0 0.55 times logarithm of two divided by the time you are given in basic SI unit, 2.4 times 10 to the power of minus three. So that'll give me an answer in basic SI units. I'm doing this a long way, by the way, 158.8 uh, ohm. So yeah, <laughs> there it is. So that was the second question. Uh, I should have, these questions took longer than I thought it would. Um, I, I, I took a longer path than I ought. Mm.